but I came to see the school, and Masha, it's a wonderful school. See, sometimes you don't have to see the school. You see the product of the school, and you come to know the school. So the question answer session is a good sample of knowing the students. And I'm really impressed with the questions. Yes, you're most welcome. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as My name is Lokman. I am a student in College Mata, in, in college Mata Insan. Uh, here's a statement. Islam is commonly known as a terrorist religion because of media portrayal and highlights on activist groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Here's the question. How does terrorism affect your da'wah when spreading knowledge of Islam to non-Muslims? Thank you. The question poses that Islam is considered 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 terrorism because of the media and because of groups like ISIS, Al Qaeda, etc. So, how does it help or prevents you from doing dawah? As far as media is concerned, today, according to me, media is the most important weapon in the world. It can convert black into white, day into night, hero into villain, villain into hero. Unfortunately, we Muslims are very backward as far as using media to promote Islam is concerned or to remove the misconception. As far as the question is concerned, how, how does it prevent or help this terrorism? First of all, what the media says, we should remove the misconception. We should know how to reply to this media and turn the tables over. Today, Muslims in the media are called as fundamentalist, as extremist, as terrorist. What is the meaning of the word fundamentalist? Fundamentalist by definition means a person who follows the fundamentals of one particular subject. For a person to be a good, for a person to be a good mathematician, he should know, follow, and practice the fundamentals of maths. Unless he then, unless he's a fundamentalist in the field of maths, he cannot be a good mathematician. For a person to be a good scientist, he should know, follow, and practice the fundamentals of science. Unless he's a fundamentalist in the field of science, he cannot be a good scientist. You cannot paint all fundamentals with the same brush that all are good or all are bad. Depending in which field the person is a fundamentalist, you have to label him accordingly. For example, if you have a fundamentalist robber whose profession is to rob, then he's bad for the society. On the other hand, if you have a fundamentalist doctor whose profession is to save human lives, he's good for the society. You can't paint all fundamentals with the same brush that all are good or all are bad. Depending in which field the person is a fundamentalist, you have to label him accordingly. As far as I am concerned, I am a fundamentalist Muslim and I am proud to be a fundamentalist Muslim. Because I know, I follow and I strive to practice the fundamentals of Islam. And I know that there is not a single fundamentalist which is not a single fundamental of Islam which is against humanity as a whole. And if you read the Oxford Dictionary for the meaning of the word fundamentalist, it says that fundamentalist is a person who strictly adheres to the ancient teachings of the scriptures of any religion. But when we read the revised edition, there's a slight change. It says in the revised edition of Oxford Dictionary that fundamentalist is a person who strictly adheres to the teachings of the ancient scriptures of any religion, especially Islam. So the word Islam, especially Islam, has been added. The moment you start, when you think of the word fundamentalist, you start thinking of a Muslim. That he's a fundamentalist. He's an extremist. And we Muslims go on the defense. We are apologetic. No, no, I'm not a fundamentalist. I'm not an extremist. I tell the people, I am an extremist. I'm extremely kind. I'm extremely merciful. I'm extremely loving. I'm extremely honest. Can anyone tell me what is wrong in being extremely kind, extremely merciful, extremely honest? We have to turn the tables over. We Muslims should not be apologetic. So if the media is maligning us, we turn the table over. We are apologetic. We start agreeing with them. What is the meaning of the word terrorist? Terrorist means a person who causes terror in the hearts of an innocent person. Many a times, two different labels are given for the same individual for the same activity. Let me give you some examples. That in India, 
more than 70 years back, when the Britishers were losing, when the Britishers were ruling India, there were many Indians who were fighting for the freedom of the country. These people, by the British government, they were called as terrorists. But we Indians, common Indians, we call them as freedom fighters, as patriots. Same people, same activity, two different labels. If you agree with the view of the Britishers, that the Britishers had the right to rule over India, you would call these people as terrorists. But if you agree with the view of the common Indians that the Britishers came to India to do business, that no right to rule over us, then you would call these people as patriots, as freedom fighters, same people, same activity, two different labels. And when I attend the press conference in India, and when many of them ask me, Dr. Zakir, why are many Muslims terrorists? So I ask them a counter question. That do you believe that Bhagat Singh was a terrorist? They would say, no. I said, why? No, Bhagat Singh was a freedom fighter. I said, but the British government called him a terrorist. No, we don't agree. Why? Because we know the background. So I tell them, even I don't agree Bhagat Singh is a terrorist. Even I know the background of India. So when the Britishers call Bhagat Singh, and you don't agree with them that he was a terrorist, today when the Britishers are saying Muslims are terrorists, why are you believing in them? They start laughing. Hey, hey, hey. Why? Why these double standards? Why these double standards? And we can give several examples. If you read in the 18th century, the American Revolution in 1775, the Britishers, when they were ruling USA, they told that George Washington was terrorist number one. When USA got its freedom, George Washington is made the president of USA. Imagine terrorist number one in the world made the president of USA. You have several such examples. If you see my, my talk, is terrorism a Muslim monopoly? I've spoken in detail. And the other talk, terrorism and jihad and Islamic perspective. So we Muslims should turn the tables over. And in your question, you mentioned that how, what about organization like ISIS? What is the full form of ISIS? Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. Now what we are doing, the media is maligning Islam, we are aware of that. Unfortunately, many of us Muslims ignorantly are also maligning, maligning Islam. I'm asking a question. If I say, I am the president of USA, will you go and tell that the president of USA came to my school? Will you say that? If I say, I am a president of USA, will the media go and report that the president of USA gave a talk in your school? Yes or no? The answer is? No. Why? Because you know I'm not the president. Correct? You will say some lunatic came and told me the president. You will not say the president of America came to Malaysia in your school. Correct? Because you know that I am not the president of USA, correct? So when this organization is calling itself to be the Islamic State, do you think they're Islamic? So why are you repeating? Why are you repeating Islamic State of Iraq and Syria? You should say anti-Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. <laughs> we ignorantly we ignorantly and innocently are promoting them. When we know they are not Islamic, they are killing innocent human beings. Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 32, that if anyone kills any other innocent human being, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And if he saves one innocent human being, he has saved the whole world. When we know, how can Quran be for terrorism? Impossible. There is not a single verse in any other scripture as close to as the Quran in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 32. So, so we give in our newspaper, in Muslim newspaper, ISIS killed innocent, innocent Europeans. How can a Muslim kill an innocent human being? What we should say? A ISIS, anti-Islamic state of Iraq and Syria. So next time when you ask a question, tell that how these anti-Islamic state of Iraq and Syria are doing these wrong things. No problem. So we should not unintentionally and ignorantly promote the wrong things. Correct? So we are playing into the hands of the enemies of Islam. 
these enemy of Islam are creating all this nonsense. You know, war for peace, war on war for peace. It is not war for peace, it is war on peace. Peace, salam. Religion of Islam is peace. Religion of Islam is peace. They are not doing war for peace, they are doing war on peace, on Islam. I would like to end the answer by giving the quotation of Adam Pearson. Dr. Adam Pearson said that people who worry that one day nuclear weaponry will fall in the hands of the Arabs, they fail to realize that the Islamic bomb, the bomb of peace, has already been dropped. It fell the day Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born. Hope that answers the question. Yes, can we have the last question, please? Allahu Akbar. He said, I saw, I saw prophets standing and their followers were less than 10. Three to nine. Imagine Allah Almighty sending a prophet to a community, to an ummah, who is aided with hujjah, proof, and ayat, signs, and wahi, revelation, and only three, four, five people believe in him. He walks into Jannah with his ummah and the rest of his community are driven into Jahannam. He said, I saw other prophets who had with them only one or two people. Ya ilahi. And I saw prophets who were standing all by themselves. Not a single person from their ummah accepted their dawah. So Yawm Al-Qiyamah, this messenger,